Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name. Welcome. Welcome. This is the Come As You Are Fellowship and Bible Study. And your host, uh, Sam Roof. I'm here with my uh, friend John Dickerson. Uh, he says I'm here on our Hello. Yeah. In person gathering and uh and we have this uh this gathering here. Uh a little after this is uh when we go online and we talk to all the folks around the world and and all that. So um not everybody lives close enough to be a part of our fellowship. No. Uh, sometimes, uh, just by circumstances, uh, even if you do live in the neighborhood, you feel safer or better about it somehow or another by viewing it through your uh, device. So, um, we're, we're called to be a missionary uh, church, and uh, that's, that's uh, what we're doing. We're being a missionary uh, church reaching out to all uh, you know people of uh, all walks and mm -hmm. and uh, no matter where your station is uh, god accepts you so do we uh, god is not going to turn you away and see people get a lot of times they get it all backwards you know they <laughs> think they're going to get all dressed up to meet jesus no you know uh, but jesus ain't going to leave you where he finds you but you don't got to get all dressed up to meet jesus you know if you if there are some changes to be made, be be ready. There, there are going to be changes. There are going to, he, he's a transforming God. You know, he, he, he when he t moves into your heart and your life, uh, there are going to be some real serious furniture rearranging. But it's all going to be for your good. You're all going to love it, you know. It isn't for bad. It isn't like, oh, I'm going to miss them and that. Yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to miss getting uh, abused and, and I'm going to miss being addicted. I'm going to miss being, you know, uh, doing all the things that I, I did before I met Jesus. No, I don't miss those things at all. Although I still am tempted. I still, you know, think about <laughs> stuff I shouldn't think about. I'm not a perfect Christian. Don't get me wrong. But uh, when you meet Jesus, things change for you, you know. And we're called to be uh, stewards, to be, uh, ref, you know, ref, ref, to share the, God, uh, to, uh, the blessings that God bestows on us, to look at your neighbor with compassion, with, with, with uh, concern, with love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're not, not be afraid to get involved, not be afraid to speak up or ask or be vulnerable. Yeah, we're going to talk about all that tonight. And it might sound familiar, because I've been talking about this stuff quite recently a lot. <laughs> and our new pastor, he just uh, come in uh, this, uh, this last Sunday, and his first sermon was all about being a missionary church, you know. And here it is, our first devotion on Wednesday is all about being a missionary church. So, uh, I hear you, Lord. You know, when you're getting all these extra, the, the message is no matter the source, you know. Yeah, Pastor Louise did not call up the upper room and say, hey, let's do this on Wednesday. No, there wasn't any pre-planning in mm -hmm. <laughs> respect. Uh, so, no, this is these are all confirmations. This is God's word coming to us in life. And, um, you know, we're, we're here at the end of Springs. My wife Nancy and I, and and and, and we we came here our, our various ways. Nancy and I met here, and I've always had um, uh, a desire to uh, bring Christianity to naturists and naturists mm -hmm. to Christianity. Yeah, and we're doing it. We're here. We have this. Uh, we have worship service here. We have. Um, Bible study program here, both here and online, and so, um, you know, it's happening. 
So, um, you know, if you're just willing and and whatnot, uh, the Lord will put you to work. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you think it's all about all work and, and nothing else but work, well, think about this. God wants you to take at least one day in seven to take a day off, right? To take some time out um, for, for being, you know, just, uh, you know, chilling with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're involved in that too, but that's, uh, that's just the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to work all the time. And uh, we need to, need to take a little time off, decompress. All right. Well, uh, like I said, tonight's uh, program, let's talk about mission opportunities. And uh, first, we're going to start off in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, time, this opportunity to be here our brothers and sisters and their seekers uh, all around the world and through Facebook and YouTube. And Lord, we ask your uh, blessing on this time. Uh, open our hearts, our minds our, uh, for your uh, knowledge, your wisdom, your guidance, your inspiration. Uh, help us to put away the things of the world and then to, uh, to open up ourselves to you, Lord, and, and the ways of you. Of, of looking for ways to share love and compassion and uh, give us a, a mission mind and heart in Jesus name we pray amen all right well right off the bat let's get into the daily devotion here from the upper room all right transition over there this is from Cheryl Mark Texas. Today's verse is be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. That's Ephesians 6, 18. And then we're going to read out of today's uh, Bible reading is James 5, 13 to 16. And the thought for the day is opportunities to offer love, compassion are all around us. You don't have to go far. I know we had that in our discussion tonight. You know, a lot of us think of missionaries as I'm going to uh, Kenya, I'm going to Peru or Vietnam or some far off land, and uh, you have to get uh, vaccinations and passports and visas and airplanes. But no, you don't got to go through all that. You can start right here. <laughs> <laughs> right at home. Right here. All right, let's look at James 5, 13 through 16. If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are happy, they should sing. If any of you are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and the elders should pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayer that comes from faith will heal the sick, for the Lord will restore them to health. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. For this reason, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful in what it can achieve. Amen. All right, today's devotion reads, As a nurse, I ride the hospital elevator often. Well, that's saying <laughs> for sure she rides the elevator a lot. All right, but now she says, Each day before going to my floor, I pray for visitors who will use the same elevator. Most visitors are not happy about being at the hospital. Some have traveled long distances, worried and concerned for a loved one. When I enter the elevator, I always smile and ask, how is your day going? With these five words, I can enter people's lives and God's work can begin. Some will simply smile and politely say, hi, how is your day? But sometimes the conversation goes deeper. Responses I have heard include, my day is not good. My husband had a stroke and he is not doing well or I am so tired. I haven't slept in days since my son was brought here after the accident. 
The elevator ride is quick, so I can only offer brief responses. I am so sad to hear that this is happening to your loved one. I will pray for both of you today. We don't need a passport or a plane ticket to go on a mission trip. Mission opportunities are all around us. With God's help, we can find ways to share the love and compassion of God with people we encounter each day. It will be a rewarding experience. Indeed, a rewarding experience. All right, I'm going to look in the back here for the, for the questions. All right, mission opportunities. When someone asks you, how is your day going? How do you respond? Do you keep things formal or allow the conversation to go deeper? One can usually tell if they're interested in what's going on or just using this as a passing hello people i know and i will respond to them and knowing their foibles their pains in past days or years and we will exchange commiserate as it were mm -hmm. about our issues and i'll offer them prayer and sometimes we pray together one old vet that that happens about once a week. Yeah, well, I um, I'm probably uh, one of those fine people. You know, I'm doing all right. I say that a lot. I'm doing all right. Doing okay. And uh, somebody will prompt me to to go deeper. Sometimes, oh, just okay. And I'm like, you know, and I'll and then I'll ask uh, ascertain a little bit more honestly. Or I'll even say, oh, well, I didn't mean to say it was going bad. It's just, you know, there's always room for improvement, you know. But, yeah, it kind of forces you to look at yourself. Am I really being honest to how the day is going? You know, and uh, do I really have the opportunity or time or inclination to get into it with that particular person? And these are always the questions that need to be asked. You know? uh, and sometimes it's just a quick and a passing uh, nope. Dave's going to hell in a handbasket, and there's a sail in handbaskets. Pray for me. I'm going in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes uh, you can say it up and mm -hmm. just lickety split like that, and uh, you know they, they, the will, idea. they will understand. You don't need to get into all the dirty details, but um, I encourage us to maybe just be a little bit more real. You know, like I just demonstrated, you don't have to be a, 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 you know, lay down on the examination couch, start explaining how you had mother <laughs> or father issues, and, you know, you need to work it out. And, mm. No, no, that's, that's for your pastor and your wife, and, you know, your therapist. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. No, we don't need to get to get all that, but, you know, we just enough to pray for. You know, because that's really what we're looking to do is pray for one another and to bear one another's burden and to uh, just let people know that they're heard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how have you been blessed by being asked this little question? How has it blessed you? I've had a couple times. Uh, one, I was going in for surgery at the VA. And I guess I looked a little peaked, and uh, one of the uh, helpers around there, they, they work for the VA, and he says, Sir, are you okay? And I said, No, I'm not feeling so good, and I don't know where I'm going. Do you know where this is? And he says, Well, how about if I walk you up there? And we talked the whole way, and uh, he got me up to the station where I was going to be put in a bed, and was very rewarding. He was a very good man, and he says, uh, "May the Lord watch over you. I'm sure you're going to be fine. You're in good hands here." Never forget that. Awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, myself, I uh, I am always uh, 
amazed at just how quick what seems to be an innocuous, you know, inane situation, and suddenly you're you're in the, you know in, in a session with someone and and praying and and listening and and and, and helping them process stuff, you know. Uh, if you're ready, if you're on the, you know, the lookout for these kind of opportunities, um, it's amazing just how quickly and spontaneously and uh, frequently, even, they, that they come your way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's just like when uh, when God commissioned Isaiah, you know, um, the Lord is, uh, all, you know, up there in heaven or wherever you know and his heart in your heart just like hey the the fields are white but the workers are few and so if you're standing there going i hear my lord send me uh, don't be surprised when you put to work okay <laughs> it just works like that you don't need to volunteer too hard uh, all right don't need to ask twice to be put to work with the lord all right um what locations have provided you with the unexpected opportunities to minister to others? What uh, locations seem to be a hot spot for you, in other words? Uh, the VA is one. And uh, where I live, and sometimes when I go to Home Depot, places like that. Yeah. Uh, Home Depot, I'll find some person that's lost. Mm -hmm not used to these uh, handyman things, and they can be young and old. And, uh, you know, the first time we do anything as humans, it's uh, it's quite an experience. After we've done it a couple, three times, it's old hat and we've got all the tricks down. But that first time is, mm, that's, uh, you know, this 10-minute task takes us two hours and we screw it up sometimes. Right. So I've, I've had, uh, I found people there and... Uh, especially the old guys, uh, they say, thank you very much. I said, I'm just passing it on. You know, the Lord mm -hmm. is taking care of me and just helping you along too, sir. Yeah. Reminded me of a humorous story of a family of four lost in aisle seven, wandering <laughs> around looking for the plump colors or something. And <laughs> they couldn't find their way back out. Mm. And they were camped out in the camping section. <laughs> <laughs> the place was too huge <laughs> there are places like that yeah looking for an orange vested person to give you assistance <laughs> oh look there's one a rare orange vested <laughs> catch him he's he's four lanes grab him by the heel i got <laughs> <laughs> don't let him say, oh, I don't know, I'll get somebody else, because once he's gone, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. All I, I pity the, the, the <laughs> non-handyman wandering around in Home Depot land or Lowe's. Yeah. Oh, my thing is up there. <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's intimidating. All right. Um, I, I say right here, okay, and this is my mission field, and as I was already explaining what are, what with unexpected opportunities, it's wherever I am, but I am here at the end of springs a lot, so therefore many of my unexpected opportunities are right here, at work, after work, you know, all over the place. Um... Now, how have you allowed God to work through you in these places? All right. How have you allowed God to work through you in these places? Same question again, but... Maybe. Sounds like it, really. Uh, yeah. You find someone that's obviously in distress for whatever mm -hmm. reason and, and offer help. And it may be just helping the little old lady get her cart over mm -hmm. the the edge of the grill there mm -hmm. to to get to her vehicle stand in line for the bus yeah well i've heard it said that first you take care of the immediate physical need yep. and then you can meet 
uh, meet, meet the spiritual need. But first, the physical need has to be met. And then they're open and ready to receive spiritual gift. Um, this is the way they work at uh, most missions. You know, they offer them food, shelter, medical, dental, that kind of thing. And then when they've uh, cleaned them up and given them proper care, they are ready then to receive the real food, you know, and uh, get, get, get information on how they can get to know the Lord better. And that's really all we are. We're facilitators, see. Um, you don't need a fancy title. You don't need a degree. You don't need a, even a certificate from a, com you know, a correspondence course or anything. Um, just uh, introduce them to, to God, you know. Be a, 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 a facilitator of peace, of love, of compassion, of need filling. Somebody's hungry. Don't deny them. Find them something to eat. You know, unless you yourself are starving, how can you deny another man something to eat? I mean, even if you are starving, give him it in anyway. The Lord will bless you with something to eat. Okay. Remember Elijah and the widow and her son. All right. There was a, there's a story back in Second Kings. Elijah, there was a famine in the land, and Elijah was told by the Lord to go and make company with this uh, with this widow. And uh, he approached her and told her, uh, what do you got? Make me some cake. And he says, hey, well, I just got a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour, and we're going to eat this cake and die because this is it. And uh, he says, God will not let that stuff run dry. He will always have enough oil and always have enough flour to make us cakes every day. Just let me move in with you. And that's what happened. And all throughout the famine, God took care of them. They always woke up every day and they had just enough oil and just enough flour and just, you know, enough to take wood to make a fire and cook it up and eat it. And, uh, you know, so God saw them through the famine. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you put your faith in the Lord, there's object lesson here. God will see you through it. You know, uh, if you think your money is going to save you, you think your storehouse full of goods or food or whatever is going to save you? You know, don't don't bet on. It. All right, unless the Lord blesses it, the builders build in vain. All right, that's that's truth, right there. Unless the Lord blesses it, the builders build in vain. That's right. All right. Now we're moving on. The next question here. Um, when you think of mission opportunities, what comes to mind? All right, what comes to mind when I say mission opportunities? Well, out here in Acumba, we have many people that need help. We have mm -hmm. downtrodden and people that have been on drugs, people that don't have much. Mm -hmm. We have people that are just living but they they don't have the wealth of the mm -hmm. Lord that we do so yeah. uh, I think ministering to all of those people is our mission out here in Kamba. yeah I will share I my understanding of mission opportunities has changed throughout my faith journey which is the next question I'm going to explain that as I explain the primary question because one of the first uh, things that I think of when someone says mission opportunities is we have missionaries in Tonga and uh, Indonesia and Kenya. Africa and Kenya and all these <laughs> far off exotic places where there's lots of mosquitoes and, 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 and people have been reported missing and dead and so on. Mm. And uh, so, you know, I, I, uh, I understand that you know it can be you know something other than here yeah okay it's it's uh, a lot of the you know not in my backyard kind of syndrome yeah that's all everywhere but here no missionary work 
doesn't mean Tonga, and uh, it doesn't mean I mean, it does, but if you aren't on your on a plane to Tonga, that doesn't mean you're not going out on a mission. All right, the mission is to what? Okay, what is our mission? To expand the kingdom of God. To the the kingdom of God is on uh, is drawn nigh. All right. The kingdom of God is near. All right? The kingdom of God is here and now. And we are a part of the kingdom of God. And when we share God's love, compassion, mercy, and uh, healing and, you know, with others, we're expanding the kingdom. All right? One person at a time. One conversation at a time. I plant a seed. John Waters. Another follows up. You know, God sends his army to come along and minister to you. And it's not often the same person. That's okay. You know, it takes uh, many people uh, doing whatever the Lord has called them to do. And just in that moment, you know, you're, you're driving down the road and there's this person. And you just happen to be there at the right time and... You think they're just another bum standing on the corner and you that you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to reach out and you ask, how are you doing? And then they share this, uh, you know, experience with you and you feel compelled to help them. Well, that's the work of the Holy Spirit right there. Okay, that was a godly, divine plan meeting. Okay, and they, you two were brought together by the work of the Lord. Yeah. That's mission, all right? That's our mission. You you may be sent to far-off lands, all right? You know, you may be setting up shop in Alaska or, you know, who knows where. No. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if that's not your calling, that's okay, too, you know? Uh, not everybody's called to go to Alaska. I know I'm not. I, I can't uh, wear enough clothes to be in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me, all right? I, I like to run around naked, so I'm down here where it gets hot a lot. Oh, it's just the way it is. All right. If, uh, God's calling you somewhere. He'll he'll get you ready for it. All right. Today's writer found a way to minister to others while at work. Do you find ways to minister to others as you go about your day? And if so, how? What's going on, John? Oh, we're on. Sorry. Uh, every day I usually wander out and see who's around where my camp area. And I run into different people and see how things are going. And I know a few of them, certain ones, have, they've got their problems. And we kind of wander into it and see how they're doing and offer help where we can. Um, share our foibles and things and a couple of them we we talk about the lord and how he's how he's handling our situation yeah and uh, both of those people are slowly maybe getting better i i, I think there is this hope yeah well i know um as i've already animated uh, i'm i'm always on the, the lookout and, and God provides plenty of opportunities to talk about the Lord and to share passion and faith and, and understanding on to others as a, just a natural part of the conversation. It's a, it's not like handing out tracts and going door to door like Jehovah's Witnesses or anything. It's just about being ready to hear, being ready to listen, and uh, being ready to offer an answer when you're, a, you know, prompted to do so and if you don't have all the answers that's okay uh don't feel uh, like you're not doing enough the lord will provide you with uh, much of the words you are needing to say and um you know uh study that's why we do this that's why we have these gatherings uh so that you will have knowledge and you will have understanding so that when you are asked you will not only have the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit, but you will have actual real knowledge. Uh, you will have, be a much more effective uh, witness and uh, a much more capable uh, 
missionary uh, person <laughs> when you have knowledge and understanding. So uh, that's, uh, that's, of course, uh, another scripture, you know, study to show thyselves approved so that you may provide an answer to uh, explain the, the joy that is in you. All right. Uh, when, uh, what mission opportunities does your church offer? What mission opportunities does our church offer? Uh, we have food, uh, medical, sanctuary, mm -hmm. and in uh, many cases, uh, help them find their way or secular services in the government mm -hmm. that can help. Yeah, we we have uh, you know not afraid to, and I will share this uh, one. It's a warm. Uh, it's called kind of a warm line. You know, a hotline would be like nine one one. People are dying. People are bleeding. People are having heart attacks and those sort of things. There's a prowler in the house, and you want the cops now. Uh, that's nine one one. All right. If you're lost, you're uh, not feeling well. You need mental medical or uh, psychiatric help, uh, you're feeling suicidal or even just depressed, okay? It's not necessarily a 911 call. Even feeling suicidal is 911, all right? But, uh, you know, what I mean to say is when you have need, but you don't know exactly what, you dial 211, okay? 211. And then uh, you'll be connected to an operator with the resources of the county and the federal and the state at their disposal. When they, they have the speed dial buttons right there. And so whatever it is you need, housing, uh, psychiatric, uh, medical, or whatever, uh, they'll hook you up. All right. And uh, they'll send a nice man with a badge and um, give you a ride. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah. You know? A man came to us one day uh, in Nancy, and we were on our way to the church. And we had a conversation with him. We prayed with him. We offered him some, uh, some drink and uh, everything, and, and, and he uh, very vol much voluntarily wanted to go and uh, talk to some uh, psychiatric uh, professionals. And so we made the call, and, uh, and the uh, experience was quite uh, satisfying and pleasant. And so... You know, if all that to say, even if it's beyond our immediate ability, we, we now know how to uh, hook it up with people that do have. Now, we do know other people in the area uh, that are outside the uh, normal realms of calling your government office. Um, we have uh, people uh, that, that are active in the food distribution ministry, and we can get you hooked up with some food real easy. Food, clothing, shelter, uh, you know, medical care, all that kind of thing. All right. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to, to ask somebody how they're doing and get involved. And uh, um, if you have a heart to get involved, uh, you know, come come to our church. Be uh, be willing and able, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely find an opportunity for you to be out there and be a part of our ministry. All right. Um, we, we are few, but we are all active. And so uh, just uh, uh, be willing. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Just be willing and the Lord will lead you. All right. So thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, we'll be joining uh, up back together again on Sunday uh, after about 12 noon right here in uh, the end of Springs Resort at our conference center. Uh, you can come as you are. You can watch us on Zoom. We're going to be posting up uh, the link and the passcode information uh, for anyone who wants to uh, uh, join us uh, virtually. Uh, it is clothing optional. So uh, when you tune in, uh, myself included, uh, we won't be wearing many, uh, any clothes. I, I typically uh, preach nude, and uh, 
I invite you all to be as dressed or as undressed as you'd so desire. And uh, personally, you know, you ask me why, it's, it's just uh, nothing between me and the Lord. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's without contrivance, without uh, filter, without uh, putting on a costume, uh, just like it was in the garden. And uh, I, I feel it's, uh, it, it offer, affords me a, 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 a vehicle to be feeling closer to the Lord. And uh, I think it's important to, to avail ourselves to these opportunities to be close to God without reservation, without filter. So, anyway, that's my take on it. I invite you to ask questions and uh, watch my video, What is a Christian Naturist? It's on YouTube. It's got uh, a few hundred views. Uh, watch it and learn, all right? Or just talk to me about it sometime. And uh, I'll, first of all, the first thing I'll tell you is being naked is not a sin in and to itself. Right, any more than uh, you know, wearing clothes of any kind is a sin. Uh, it's what your intent is in the first place. Okay, regardless of your state address, you can be putting on clothes with the intent to allure somebody and seduce them. Well, those are clothes of sin and deception. So, what do you adorn yourself with? Do you adorn yourself with the righteousness of Christ? Do you uh, seek uh, to have the Lord in your heart, or do you seek to fill it with lusts and desires of the flesh? Does it really matter what you're wearing, whether or not this happens in your heart? You know, um, I, 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 I'm naked every day, but I'm not, I don't walk around with lust in my heart. Um, it's, it's not a, it's not that way. I know a lot of people, they think that's what being a, a nudist is all about, is walking around with a lot of sexual desire. And it isn't. It isn't at all. It's just a pure way of living. Transparent and pure. All right. Well, that is all for this evening. And uh, we will catch you again uh, Sunday, Sunday at 12 noon at uh, De Anza and 4 p.m. at the Hakumba Community United Methodist Church, 1242 Heber Street, We'll be live broadcasting on Facebook at that time. All right. And look for us, of course. Uh, we always re-post re, uh, these on, uh, on YouTube. Okay? Later. Bless. Bye-bye. Bless. Bye.